Hello everybody, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. Now this week I started a web series on how to integrate audio into game development projects using audio kinetic vice. Uh, and uh, this web series is actually a little bit on YouTube like the entire web series is probably going to be somewhere between eight to ten hours long with each episode being about an hour or maybe even more. So I thought I'll take this opportunity to offset that a little with smaller videos, maybe quick tips, uh, short tips and tricks. Uh, and uh, you know if you like those short videos let me know and I can certainly make more of them. But the thing I want to talk about today is the Doppler pitch shift effect and how do we recreate it in spatial audio production. Now we've already talked about that the Doppler pitch shift effect is a result of the speed of a sound source. So if you are using a traditional panning plugin that only works with the position of an object it cannot recreate the pitch shift effect because essentially it only works with the position and not with the speed of an object. So the easiest way we would normally go about recreating the Doppler effect is by using a dedicated Doppler plugin, Doppler effects plugin. And and uh, there are many of those. Noendo comes with one of them. Uh, the Waves plugin suite has one of them. Pretty much any bigger plugin suite has a, has a uh, Doppler pitch shift effect included. Uh, and that's certainly one way we can go. But uh, what I wanted to show you today is that there's actually an easier way to do that. And that is by using a dedicated panning plugin that already has the Doppler pitch shift effect included. And that panning plugin is the IEM Room Encoder plugin. And best of all, that plugin is actually free as part of the IEM plugin suite. So uh, so let's, let's get right to it. I've already created a little um, project here. And uh, once again, this is about as simple as it gets. So this, this project is just a little engine. Um, for this engine, I used a plugin from uh, the from the, from Boom Library, which is the Turbine engine. It's a, a, a really nice plugin actually that that, that tries to mimic turbines and uh, the sound turbines make. Um, now in this particular case, I'm using a Cessna engine. Um, you know, kind of. I I, I didn't I didn't. Um, uh, try to optimize the sound of that so it might not sound like a, a, a Cessna engine but it is essentially at least close enough to an engine so that we can actually uh, hear it to be an engine. So let me just unmute that because it, if, if, you're, if you're not unmuting it it's constantly running that plugin doesn't doesn't need any any media input is constantly running in the background so let me just unmute that so that we hear how that sounds. I currently have it panned right to the to the left so that's essentially the plugin, the, the engine. Sounds a little bit more like a, like wind than an engine, but, but for our purpose, it's fine. Um, so, so what I've essentially done is I wanted to show you how uh, essentially it sounds if I'm using a traditional panning plugin and I'm panning from hard left to hard right, and then I'm going to exchange this panning plugin with the room encoder from the IAM plugin suit. Now, in order to do that, the first thing that I did here is I turned that stereo signal into a mono signal. Now, the way to do that in Noendo, or the easiest way to do that in Noendo is by taking the signal and routing it into a mono bus. Uh, this mono bus is here called mono bus. And uh, in the, let me just uh, open that so they can see it better. Uh, and in the, in the panning, essentially, and the mono bus essentially is then routed into an ambisonics bus and spe specialized that way and uh, the panning plugin that pans the monobus into the ambisonics bus uh, is set up such that the uh, object is currently hard panned to the left and uh, I added some automation that uh, moves the object from the hard left to the hard right uh, and that is then once again forwarded into the ambisonics bus and from the anisonics bus into the stereo bus and that's the way I hear that. So let, let's just have a listen on how that actually sounds. First let's unmute the engine. So as you can hear it, it's sort of moving from the left to the right. But especially now in the middle, it's not really recreating the things that we normally used to hear when an engine passes by. So, so this pitch shifting is missing, right? right? It's just moving from left to right. So how, how go we about that? Uh, well, once again, 
let me just turn that off. The easiest way uh, to do that is by simply using a panning plugin that also has the pitch shift included. And the, uh, the, the one that I'm going to use, and to my knowledge, actually the only one that I'm aware of, at least that has that included, is the room encoder from the IEN plugin suite. And uh, this room encoder actually does two things. It, it adds, it, well, actually three things. It, it does uh, position an object in three-dimensional space. So that's the first thing. It is a panic plugin. And then it adds a reverberation based on a space, a box-shaped space. Uh, I can actually change the, the size of that space. The uh, standard uh, is 10 by 11 by 7 meters. Uh, and then it uh, adds the pitch shift effect depending on the speed of the object. So if the object is moving around, it will actually change the uh, the pitch of that object according to the traditional physical properties of, of the way how sound moves in this space. Now, uh, when you first open the plugin, it will actually have the reparation included that uh, it actually comes with a number of reflections that you can set. Uh, the number of reflections give the uh, the depth uh, with which the reverberation is calculated. Now, because this is an engine, uh, I'm, I set it to zero because I'm, I'm assuming that the engine is on the outside. We are not really in a space, uh, so so I'm not really want to hear the reverberations. I just want to have the, the pitch shift effect. But just for the purpose of uh, of hearing how that sounds, uh, let me let me let me set that the number of reflections back to zero, so no reverberation, and let me turn the engine on. There's one more thing I need to do. I need to enable the room encoder, and I need to disable the uh, traditional plugin, the panning plugin. So what I'm currently doing is I'm taking the mono bus, I'm routing it directly into the Ambisonics bus, and the the uh, room encoder, which is an Ambisonics plugin, which needs to sit in the Ambisonics bus, is then taking that mono signal and turning that into an ambisonic signal and then the uh, essentially the Nuendo tech does the rest from turning the ambisonic signal back into a stereo signal that I can hear in my headphones. So let me let me just turn on the engine again. Uh, once again it's now it's it's still panned hard to the left. Um, now if I if I if I'm assuming that actually is an engine inside a room and let me just turn on the reverberations and turn the number of reflections. So as I'm going up with the number of reflections, you will see that the, the signal becomes more and more complex. It's going to add more and more reflections here. And I can actually, actually move that around to, to give you an, a bit of an idea on how that actually sounds. So if I, if I take the object So essentially, I, I get both the, uh, the, the the effect of an object moving in three-dimensional space and uh, with the correct pitch shift applied. So let me let me set that back to the way it was, and I think I had that to be zero here. And let me turn the number of reflections back to zero because once again, this is an engine on the outside, so I'm I'm not going to. It's not in a room, so so no no reverberations going on. And then let's, uh, essentially the, the, the final thing that I did is I, I automated the position and only the Y position of that object. Once again, from the hard left to the hard right. Uh, and let's see here how that sounds in, uh, with, the, with the room encoder. And as you can hear, you're getting a much, much more realistic effect. Now, when it comes to the end, you, you heard the, because essentially the, the signal is moving from the hard left, from the hard right, instantly to the hard left, which gives this zap, this zip. That is a result of the plugin. So once again, let's let's go back to the to the uh, to the situation without the room encoder and the, the regular panning plugin. Ah, I need to unmute that. Sorry. So that is the that is the regular panning. There's no sap going on because it's the same pitch, so there's no change in the pitch. And now change over to the. Let me just wait for for the for the change over to the 
Rooming code again. Turning off the regular plugin. Rooming code. This is actually everything I wanted to show you. So if you if you're interested in using uh, these. Uh, Doppler effects, uh, one way to go obviously is to use a Doppler effects plugin and then try to match the position of the object to the to the Doppler effect that you're creating. This would be the standard way to do that. But you can also allow uh, let a, a plugin do that for you. And, uh, and uh, the IAM room encoder is a very nice solution that has everything included. You just change the position of an object and it will calculate the, uh, the Doppler shift effect for you. Now, the, the only disadvantage here is that you obviously cannot do that on an Dolby Atmos object because you have to, you cannot use the Dolby Atmos panning plugin. You have to use the room encoder planning plugin and that cannot feed directly into the Dolby Atmos renderer. But what you, what you could do, for example, is you could use that for a in, in Dolby Atmos bed, uh, and you know, kind of, if you you can even have multiple beds in Dolby Atmos, so so use the room encoder plugin to pan objects into a bed that is then used for 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 Dolby Atmos, and uh, and uh, essentially that the object would be other objects where you, you essentially maybe even don't have a Doppler effect or create the Doppler effect in any other way. So you can technically use it for Dolby Atmos, but it's not. Uh, you cannot use it in a way that directly feeds the output of the room encoder plugin into the Dolby Atmos renderer. So that that is the the one that is the one disadvantage. Uh, so that this is really everything I wanted to to show. Uh, if you have any questions, drop me a comment. Uh, I'm more to have more than happy to answer every 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 question that you might have, and maybe I even do another question and answer video. And other than that, uh, if you liked that video, press the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and see you at the next video.